On Saturday, March 15, 2023, Troy University officially dedicated the National Panhellenic Council Plaza, comprised of nine markers recognizing and honoring the historically African-American Greek letter organizations. Master of Ceremonies is Miles Camel. Good morning, my name is Miles Camel. I'm the MC for this occasion today. I'm a senior broadcast journalism major with a leadership development minor from Dothan, Alabama. I am also a brother of the Zi Beta chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and I also serve on the MPHC Executive Committee. I would like to start by recognizing Chancellor Jack Hawkins Jr. and his lovely wife, Mrs. Janice Hawkins. I would also like to thank the members of the Troy University Board of Trustees and members of the Foundation Board, our senior vice chancellors at Troy University, city and county officials, national and state officers of our MPHC fraternities and sororities, university faculty and staff, for their attendance at this celebration today. Today, we are gathered here to dedicate the MPHC Plaza and to celebrate our members and our chapters. This plaza, which recognizes our chapters, was a dream of former executive members, but due to the dedication of several people and the assistance of brother, trustee, Lamar P. Higgins, who I am confident is watching over us today. This project is now a reality. These individuals are Dr. Derek Brewster, Ms. Meredith Welch, Dean Herbert Reeves, Mr. Bernard Goins, Ms. Chelsea Blunt, and Mr. Benger Benjamin Hubert II. Thank you for your efforts and patience and your hard work on this project. The MPHC is composed of nine black Greek letter fraternities and sororities. MPHC's mission is to promote, promote unity, foster leadership development, and scholarship. Today's unveiling recognizes these organizations that advocate for those and inspire others. I welcome to the podium Ms. Taj Brundage, the current MPAC Vice President and the Vice President of her sorority, Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. Thank you. How y'all doing today? All right, bow your heads. I'm going to say a quick prayer. prayer. Dear Father God, we come to you right now to thank you. We thank you for gathering us here today to celebrate an amazing moment in D9 history. We thank you for the opportunity to allow us to represent our organizations right now and for years to come here on Troy University's campus. We ask you for traveling grace and mercy as we depart and go our separate ways today. In Jesus' name we do pray, amen. Amen. Joy now. <laughs> Prayer is always an important thing, and thank you, Ms. Brunders, for, bless for bringing blessings to this group and the occasion. Managing and advising our MPAC chapter is a tiring task, and oversight requires commitment from those charged with transforming lives. I would like each advisor and or graduate sponsors to stand up on behalf of the MPAC. I would like to say thank you for your dedication and hard work, because without you, our organizations cannot function. Mrs. Joy Isom, a junior from Valdosta, Georgia, majoring interdisciplinary studies. She's a member of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated and serves as the current MPAC president. Ms. Isom will now bring greetings on behalf of the MPAC groups. Joy Isom. Good morning, everybody. My name is Joy Isom. I hope everybody is doing well today. Um, I serve as the current NPAC president for the 2022-2023 academic year. I'm a member of the Oh So Pretty Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. <laughs> <laughs> um, first, I'd like to recognize the 2022-2023 Executive Board NPAC officers. Danielle Skinner, Taj Brundish, <laughs> Marquise Jackson, Miles Camel, Emmanuel Marsh, Quinn Mason and Brittany Moulton. We are gathered here today to unveil a new addition to our wonderful campus, a place to tell the growing history of our National Panhellenic Council here at Troy University. But this wouldn't have been possible without the support of each NPAC chapter advisor in attendance today. These men and women are a dedicated group who spend countless hours providing support and assistance to our chapters. If it was not for your assistance, we would not be able to function and exist. On behalf of NPAC and our members, thank you. 
Since the first NPAC organization started on our campus in 1976, these chapters have been a vital part of our campus, culture, and history. Members of our organizations have served as SGA presidents, Sounds of the South Band directors, Board of Trustee members, academic and athletic All-Americans, orientation leaders, homecoming queens, Miss TSU, members of national championship teams, and members of the Troy University Hall of Fame. The culture and significance of our chapters are entirely ingrained into the DNA of Troy University. Even today, members of NPIC continue to uphold their legacy as student leaders on campus and in the community. Several of our current NPAC members continue the legacy as student leaders of many of the same clubs and organizations and make the collegiate experience great here at Troy. Today, this plaza brings us together to celebrate the past, present, and the future of black Greek letter organizations on the campus of Troy University. It will serve as a place to educate the campus on the history of each of the non-member organizations while offering a new outdoor gathering place for community engagement, programming, and celebrations. This plot will be a glimpse of what NPAC means to Troy as well as the D9 community here at the university. It will be a representation of Creek unity and the love that the D9 organizations here at Troy share. A place of recogni recognition that we matter and the challenging work, sweat, and dedication each member has gotten a chance to share together as we empire generations to come. It will be a mark we leave for all that has graduated and all to come that the MPAC Greek organizations are bonded together forever. In my eyes, although we all represent different organizations, we are all still family and I'll cherish the plots here for a lifetime. <laughs> I know many of our fellow Greek members are excited to celebrate their final moments as the Trojans here at the Plaza. I cannot wait to take my final undergraduate pictures here at the, a at the AKA plot and give my last ski wee and my final goodbyes to my friends, D9 family, and the school that has been my home for the last four years. I'm so appreciative of everyone. I'm glad everybody could make it here today and <laughs> thank y'all. Thank you, Ms. Eiselman. Please continue your superb leadership within and outside of the classroom. Before we move on, I would like for us to take a moment of silence to recognize one of the greatest Trojans to ever grace this planet, and luckily he's my fraternity brother, trustee brother Lamar P. Higgins. Mr. Higgins was a trailblazer here at Troy. During his tenure, he was the first black SGA president. He was a charter member of the Zi Beta chapter of Alpha Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, and he was the first black trustee board member for Troy University. I am honored to say Mr. Higgins was my fraternity brother and a role model for me personally. We would not be here dedicating this plaza without his hard work and dedication. Our next speaker is an advocate for our student body and university. Trustee General Ed Crowell serves as the chair for Student Affairs Committee. He is dedicated to the mission of Greek life and is a member of Omega Sci-Fi Fraternity Incorporated. Please welcome to the podium Mr. Trustee General Ed Crowell. What a beautiful day. Yes. You know, I don't know if you noticed, but uh, when she mentioned AKA, the drape just came off by itself. <laughs> now that's power. <laughs> that is truly power. <laughs> the other thing is, um, you know, as we talk about our fraternities today, and I, I just want you to take note at the landscape here, you know, the, uh, each pillar is at the top and, and everything goes down from there. So that's an indication is that lots of hard work was done and has been done and will continue to be done uh, to strive to get to where these pillars are. That's going up. First of all, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here today. Uh, it is my honor to bring greetings today on this landmark occasion in the life of Troy University. My purpose is twofold. I bring greetings on behalf of my colleagues on the Troy University Board of Trustees. On a more personal note, allow me to put this day into perspective from my vantage point as a member of a National Panhellenic Council fraternity. The mottos 
of the NPHC fraternities and sororities are filled with words such as merit, wisdom, friendship, achievement, and service. Now, each of those have a divine meaning, so I should take heed to those. I know from experience these are not merely words on a page, but words to live by. My lifelong affiliation with Omega Psi Phi fraternity, coupled with my service in the United States Air Force, has shaped my life in ways I never thought possible when I was growing up in rural Russell County, Alabama. My fraternity introduced me to the powerful and the power of brotherhood and the satisfaction of serving others. Having brothers and sisters with you on each step of life's journey is a blessing and even more a comfort. In similar fashion, thousands of Troy University students have benefited from their affiliation with an NPHC organization over the past 50 decades, five decades rather. Many of these alumni are with us this morning and I thank you for joining us I think uh, each one is showing their colors, and that's a, we're always proud of that. This plaza celebrates your legacy, but it means so, so much more. It will serve as a symbol to future students that, PH, that NPHC fraternities and sororities hold a place of honor and respect at Troy University. Most important, it will encourage future generation of students to become part of the legacy and reap the benefits as many of you did. The Apostle Paul writes in the book of Romans, be devoted to one another in brotherly love. Honor one another above yourselves. In the spirit, in that spirit, my hope is that this plaza would serve as a place of reverence and respect and as a place where brotherhood and sisterhood flourish for generations to come. Again, it is indeed a pleasure for me to be here and it has been my esteemed pleasure to be associated with an NPHC fraternity whose four cardinal principles is manhood, scholarship, perseverance, and uplift. And each of those have a definite meaning. And I know each of the fraternities and sororities have their own uh, indications that will inspire them to move on and on and on. So I say to each of you as you leave Troy University, tell the story. Invite others to come and do as you've done. Because I know you've made a difference, and that's what it's all about. Thank you. Thank you, General Crowell. Colonel Felicia Burks is a Troy alumnus and was initiated to the Mu Alpha chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated. Colonel Burks received her Bachelor's of Science in Vocational Rehabilitation with a minor in Military Science. In 2002, she completed her Master's degree in Management with an emphasis in Healthcare Administration. Colonel Burke served our great nation for over 20 years in the Army and the Air Force. In August 2020, she became the inaugural Diversity and Inclusion Chief, executing the Air Force Surgeon General's vision to cultivate a culture of diversity and inclusion. Please join me in welcome to the podium, Colonel Felicia Burks. Dr. Mrs. Hawkins, what a pleasure to be home. Thank you. So I'll start. Um, this is just so surreal and um, just being able to be gathered here with all of you and seeing all of the divine nine, but not only that, our leaders. Um, General, sir, pleasure to meet you. It means family and so I share a lot about Troy because Troy is very important to me. And when we think diversity, equity, and inclusion, there's a lot to add to that. But I grew up in rural Alabama, probably about 18 miles from here, a real town called Grady, Alabama, amazing people. But I went to high school in Luverne, and so amazing people there too. And there were things that I didn't know, didn't even know how to get to, because people just didn't know. 
And that's what diversity, equity, and inclusion is about. Just finding someone who had that access to get you in. Troy gave me an opportunity, and I get to represent Troy proudly as a leader in our United States Air Force, where I'm a colonel and get to lead. And so I share that because regardless of where you come from, if you just persevere and get into the right places and right rooms, leaders will help you get to where you need to go, and your purpose will always help you excel. So with that being said, I made some notes because I realized it's a multicultural generation that I'm talking to folks who are currently students at Troy, who's doing it the traditional way. Some who've been out of college for 20 years, some 40, some others. But we're bridging the divide across all these generations. And so I'll use my phone today to try to connect with those millennials and perhaps that Gen Zer. But anyway, Dr. and Mrs. Hawkins, the Troy University leadership team, our general officers present today, their spouses, our NPHC leaders, the community partners and leaders, those educators, not only from elementary or high school or college, but those educators, thank you. To each of you who are represented today, and specifically the students here and the D9, as a NPHC member, I'm honored. I'm honored to be able to grace this podium I'm honored to be able to stand in front of the area that will unveil the future. But today marks service. It marks honor. It marks more than just doing our call sounds from whatever you scream. I won't say ski wee, but for whatever you scream, it is, it's bigger than that. It marks a moment in time. It etches a memory. It marks a move. Today marks history. It marks legacy, it marks culture, it marks, it marks reflection. From heritage to heritage for what Troy University stands for, back then it was Troy State University, it was already international. But Troy University is truly internationally known, making a difference in our national security and preserving Americans' freedom for what we get to do here so freely today but what other people in other countries don't get to do. I stand proudly here because Troy made me. And not only did Troy make me, many of you, right, back in the day when I was on the quad, which we were so saddened to thought it was erupted, but realized that Troy was building beauty for something that we could be so proud of, and then that one day we would be able to rename this, where you, the current students of Troy University in Greek, can send here and do your probates where we once graced the quad. But what an honor. Today marks unity, it marks one cause, and I hope we don't rush through it. As I've matured in life, I realize it's important that we pause to be present, to breathe and take it in. Even the sounds you hear today, the winds that you feel, and even the beauty, beautiful sun that is gracing our skin, it marks a moment that we should not forget and remember. It is significant, and though it's a moment in time, and when times get hard, because they will, it's just life. But you'll remember what Troy University did today for the Divine Nine and for so many others because of inclusion. So that one day, many of your students, many of your children, and even you, those are freshmen, sophomores, fresh, um, juniors, or seniors, that one day you'll be standing somewhere making a difference in the world because Troy University gave you an opportunity, because Troy University made an opportunity for the Divine Nine so that you did feel that you had a place where you belonged, that you could connect, that you could get mentored, and so that you can learn leadership skills so that when, if and when you had to brief a general officer, who we do equate to and similar because they get to speak to many um, state leaders all over this world, that you would be qualified, that you would be credible, and that you would be committed to excellence. And so we thank Troy University for giving this opportunity. And I say that deliberately because words matter and they're intentional. And because whether you're a member of Omega Psi Phi or Alpha Phi Alpha or Iota or Kappa Sigma, I mean the Kappas or Sigma, or whatever fraternity or each sorority from Alpha Kappa Alpha to Delta Sigma Theta to Sigma Gamma Rho or Zeta Phi Beta, whatever it is, that you stand with credibility, and then as you go out into other parts of the country, you are proud that you 
We're part of a Greek-led organization at Troy University who's just now sitting here in Troy, Alabama. Do not forget where you came from. Troy is amazing. And I say that with everything in me and use these words very carefully so that you understand that. And so as we breathe it in, there's a great person that we all love, or some of us, Beyonce. And she sang a song that I was here. And I share these words because I realize that I'm talking to a multi-generational group. But some of the lyrics say, I want to leave my footprints on the sands of time. Know there was something that I left behind. When I leave this world, I'll leave no regrets. Leave something to remember so they won't forget. I was here. I lived. I loved. I was here. I did. I've done everything that I wanted. And it was more than I thought it would be. I will leave my mark so everyone will know I was here. I want to say I lived each day until I died. I know that I had something in somebody's life. The hearts I have touched will be the proof that I leave, that I made a difference in this world, and this world will see. And that's what we see behind us. So as I represent the D9, it is an honor once again to stand here at a gathering place, a place where representation matters, a place that has clearly highlighted that you belong and that you are legacy. For some, this will be a place where new memories, memories are made. For others, it will be one where people come to reflect. But today, it's a place that I believe Dr. Hawkins knew was going to manifest. But it took time. It took agreement. It took partnership. It took everyone to agree. There's an African proverb that says, if you want to go fast, go alone. But if you want to go far, go together. Today, I see together. Regardless of what shade or hue that we share, I see together. I see one voice, one heart, one Troy. And I'm so proud to be here today. And so in saying that, as we look 93 years later from when the NPHC was founded on Howard University, May 10th of 1930, I envision this as a place of the present and the future. The new quad, now plaza, where the D9 shall gather, reflect, grow, and develop, and inspire the future. It would be a place that marks leadership, value, meaning, and purpose. It would be the place where we take Mahatma Gandhi's words, be the change that we wish to see in the world. So Detroit University, thanks for being an example. Thanks for being a bridge. Thanks for being a sponsor. Thanks for equipping people and women like me to make a difference in our world as we defend the freedoms of our nation. I joined Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated while pursuing my degree at Troy University, while also working to become a commission officer in our United States military, our profession of arms. Troy taught me academic excellence. It taught me the value of relationships. It taught me the value of hard work. And the return on investment is significant. It continues to yield dividends that I could have never imagined. And I get to make a difference in this world because of Troy. Thank you for being a catalyst in the long game success of not only me, but so many others gathered here today. I salute you and thank you. Dr. Hawkins, you're my hero. Thank you. Thank you, Colonel Burks. When I think of our next speaker, I think of a visionary, a transformational leader, a mentor, and a servant leader. He is an advocate for the growth and development of our Greek system and believes in the role that our Greek system plays here on campus. Please join me in welcoming to the podium Chancellor of Troy University, Dr. Jack Hawkins, Jr. Thank you so much, uh, Miles. Uh, he was, Miles was in my office just a few days ago, and he reminded me when I asked him, I said, Miles, where are you going in life? And he said, well, first I want to finish uh, Troy University, but ultimately I want to sit behind your desk. <laughs> <laughs> you and, I, and I have no doubt that that potentially exists in, in Miles. Thank you so much. And uh, to, to Joy, to uh, Colonel Burks, to General Crow, thank you. You know, I, I often think the best barometer for what a university uh, can be is based on the success of its alumni. And I would say this about Troy University, nothing, nothing is beyond our reach. And if you want to think what is be within reach, just look at the achievements of just those few people. And uh, we're so proud. We're so proud of all of you. I'm proud of Joy. Thank you for your comments.
But I would remind you, you sort of had a, a note of finality in your in your voice about graduating. But when we celebrate you and we present that degree to you, that's called commencement. And commence means to begin. And the life's journey really begins there. And one thing that's really remarkable about the Greek system, and those who have experienced it, you know this to be true. It doesn't end at graduation. It really has a beginning at that point. It is a lifelong relationship. And the older you get, the more you realize that life is about relationships. It's about lives touched. The portfolio that's truly important is not the financial portfolio. I've known lots of wealthy people in my life and on their deathbed, they didn't ask to see their balance sheet. They, they asked, they talked about people and that's really what is important in life. It's important in life. Colonel Burks, thank you for reminding us of, of the significance of this experience as it relates to the future. Uh, I am so proud of the Divine Nine. I'm, I'm proud of our Greek system at large. I want to thank those who have contributed so much to getting us to this place on this day for this occasion. I'd be really remiss if I didn't thank uh, the, the Gospel Choir and Sheila Jackson. Sheila, uh, oh happy days. This is a happy day. <laughs> and it'll be even a, a greater and more and happier day when my grandson Patrick Jackson graduates in December. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick will be relieved for me not to bother him about graduation as I have the last several years. My wife and I were talking about Patrick just a few minutes ago and she said, how long has Patrick been here? <laughs> and then she said, has it been 10 years? And I said, I don't think so. <laughs> but Patrick, has, he realized what most of us didn't realize early enough. You know, this is the best time in your life, students. So don't rush through it. Now, I know most parents wouldn't like for me to say, take 10 years, <laughs> but those really smart students here know that you're in the best phase of your life. You're building relationships. You're building a portfolio. You're having fun. You're having fun. I urge you, though, and this spot is a reminder, not to have too much fun as you go through life, especially while you're here. Today, we do celebrate a great legacy uh, of all of those who have been through this place before and I really appreciate what Miles had to say uh, and, and, and General Crowell referred to Lamar Higgins my goodness one of the great blessings in our life my life and Janice's life as a couple uh, occurred when we met Lamar well before he was on our board of trustees and he did a, such a superb job it was a real pleasure now I would say this John Robert Lewis said, uh, good trouble. That's the role, we create good trouble. Lamar created a lot of good trouble in my life. <laughs> he had a passion for Troy University, but he had a passion too for all of us. And the one thing that we've been so proud of at Troy University has been the confluence of people. I know when Janice and I arrived in Troy in 1989, there were 40 countries represented in our our 40 international students in our student body. Before COVID, that was 75 countries. And when you think about how different we are as a community today than when we were a few years ago when Colonel Burks came out of Grady, Alabama, it was a little bit different world and how much better all of us are today. And it's because we recognize real leadership is not about dividing people, it's about bringing people together in unity. So all of us, all of us can contribute. And all of us are seen literally for whom we are and not what others may have previously perceived us to be. That's the essence of Troy University. We want every student to come and understand that global village because it'll be that village that you make a difference and it's that village that'll influence you and shape you as the years go by. So we're very proud of who we are as a university we know who we are as a culture we know that this place is but a symbol but it's a wonderful symbol and i would remind you that uh, in the words of the late great dr martin luther king he said intelligence plus character intelligence plus character that's the goal of a true education intelligence plus character 
That's what we're reminded of in this place. This is not a party place. This is a reverence, place of reverence. This is a place where we come and appreciate those who have contributed before us in the divine nine and beyond because it, while the Greek system may be in jeopardy in many universities across this country, I maintain, and I was a Greek, and I continue to be a Greek, but it's the Greek system that's truly the catalyst of leadership and unity at Troy University. And so I applaud you. I applaud you, applaud you for giving of yourselves. But you know what you find in life? It was what Winston Churchill said. He said, you make a living by what you get, but you make a life by what you give. And we all receive so much more than we're ever able to give. And that's what we want for Troy University to truly be a landmark institution, not only in Alabama in the South, but across this country and around the world where all people, all people can realize their potential. And I would close by saying, in 2020, July of 2020, we lost a remarkable icon when we lost the late Congressman John Robert Lewis. We were so privileged and honored to have one of those three stops at Troy University. Many of you were here in our beautiful arena. And let me say this, let me say this, you know, without vision, the people perish. You know, but a vision in isolation is not truly a vision. It could be a nightmare but a collective vision can drive people together and to a common goal. And I want to thank those who have contributed so much. As I look out, as you look out to my back, it took us 50,000 dump truck loads of dirt to bring in so we could create much of what you're enjoying this morning. Many of you were here when we had a golf course in those 40 feet, feet ravines. You know, that took a lot of dirt to fill up. But what we were able to say and do, and Colonel Burks, Bur you used the quad as an example, without vision, the people perish. You have to have a vision. And when you have that collective vision, and what we've tried to realize here are facilities that are second to none. When we look across the street and see that new health science facility going up, when we look behind us and see the gym of all baseball facilities in the Sun Belt Conference, it's about what we can be. It's not about what we've been. We have great tradition, and we believe in this place, but it's what we can be as a, as a community and as a group. And John Robert Lewis said this, though, as, and he was a very, very proud member of Phi Beta Sigma. He said this, let us respect the dignity and the worth of every human being. That's what all of us need to commit to and subscribe to as we look at this very reverent place. I want to see in the years ahead the names of every member of the Divine Nine in a brick on this plaza. I want to encourage all of you to, to take that step, and we'll make sure you know how to do that. But your legacy, so you can bring your children and grandchildren and great-grandchildren to this place, your legacy will be here on a permanent basis. The Divine Nine, thank you. Thanks to all of those. I want to thank Herb Reeves and, and Darius Williams and Derek Brewster and those who rode with Lamar as I did before he passed away on this date. I know Lamar is here because it was on this date two years ago that we lost him. But he's here. The spirit of Lamar Higgins shall forever permeate this plaza and I want to say God bless Lamar. God bless each of you. Today, at this point, I would declare that this place, this plaza, is officially dedicated. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Hawkins, for your commitment to this university, our student body, and the MPAC Plaza Initiative. <clears throat> As representatives of Troy University, our Greek life system is committed to excellence in leadership through service, friendship, and empowerment. This project was supported by our entire Greek community. I would like to thank the members and the chapters of the six Panhellenic sororities and the eight fraternities in the IFC who supported this project. This project would not be possible without generous contributions of many. I would like to thank all involved and recognize the contributions of a few individuals who spearheaded the fundraising efforts from their organization. 
from the Zi Beta chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated, Colonel USA retired, James Epting, and the 17 karat gold charter members. From the Mu Alpha chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, Catherine Jordan, Nicole Sloan, and Miranda Griffin. <clears throat> From the Theta Phi chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated, Colonel, retired Nathan Mooney. <clears throat> From the Rho Delta Delta chapter of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated, Mr. Eric Sloan, Dr. Derek Brewster, and Mr. Travis Bozeman. From the New Theta chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated, 33 Destiny Fulfilled, Miss Sylvia Malone, and Donna Griffin Hall. <laughs> Dean Herbert Reeves. And Mr. Alex Lewis for assisting with project design, and Mr. Benny Picker and his team for work to complete this project in times of supply chain uncertainties. Now for the moment we've all been waiting on here today, the unveiling of individual markers on the MPAC Plaza. The New Theta chapter of Delta Sigma Theta Sorority Incorporated was charted at Troy University on May 22, 1976. The Theta Phi chapter of Kappa Alpha Psi Fraternity Incorporated was charted at Troy University on November 21, 1976. The Mu Alpha chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated was charted at Troy University on February 26, 1978. The Xi Beta chapter of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated was charted at Troy University on May 28, 1978. The Zeta Mu chapter of Zeta Phi Beta Sorority Incorporated was chartered at Troy University on November 12, 1982. The Alpha Alpha Lambda chapter of Phi Beta Sigma Fraternity Incorporated was chartered at Troy University on November 21, 1992. The Rho Delta Delta chapter of Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated was charted at Troy University on July 12, 1995. The Omicron Pi chapter of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated was founded at Troy University May 22, 1999. The Delta Colony of Iota Phi Theta Fraternity Incorporated was started at Troy University in 2015. Thank you all for your hard work, and this plaza is now dedicated. Now, I know you all were expecting for this final song of the day to be a duet between me and Ms. Jackson. I won't. I won't let y'all hear that today. They have to pay me for those vocals, and I didn't get a check in the mail. Uh, Ms. Jackson uh, is now going to sing with our Troy Gospel Singers under the direction of Mr. Carlton Copeland. Thank you. Let's give a round of applause for the Teacher Gospel Choir. That's Mr. Jimmy Bob. Let's come to the mic.
but we thank you all for, for that beautiful song. Before we close and give our benediction today, I would like to invite someone special to talk about what all Troy University has going on and what our football program in particular has going on today and furthermore. Uh, we would like to now welcome to the podium Coach Bam Hartman. Uh, what an awesome, awesome ceremony. We'd like to thank you, Dr. Hawkins, for allowing this to happen. Uh, being here, I'm in my, well, I just finished my eighth year here at Troy as the outside linebackers coach and just wanted to say that Troy football supports the, the National Pandemic Council. Okay, so I want to make sure guys understand that. And then with that being said, we would like your support as well. Okay, now, we have T-Day game at 2 o'clock today, so what a great time to support us, right? All right, and um, we have a kids camp at 2 o'clock, so, and that's free to all the kids from 4 to 12, so if anyone wants to participate in that, we'd like to offer that up. And now for the Golden Nugget, we will allow you all to tour our North End Zone facility um, as we wrap this up, so we'd like to offer that opportunity as well. We're, again, about to have the game so the sooner we get out there we have our, some of our players kind of oozing on in so if we can get in there kind of tour the place the more you guys are able to see uh the less people there are in there if you if you catch my drift right <laughs> all right well thank you again and uh, go troy football right <laughs> At this time, I would like to now welcome to the stage a Troy alum and a good friend of mine to the podium, podium Ms. Chelsea Blunt. Ms. Blunt was the MPAC president in 2020 when this project was conceptualized, and she will offer the benediction. Ms. Chelsea Blunt. Hi, everybody. Um, on behalf of the MPHC, I would like to give another thank you again to Dr. I mean Chancellor Hawkins. I'm sorry, Dean Reeves, um, our board of trustee members, Dr. Derek Brewster, Mr. Sidaris Williams, Ms. Meredith Welch, and all of our donors, and everyone else who um, put in any effort to make this project a visualization. Um, I'm going to ask you to bow your heads. We're going to do a benediction prayer, and we'll be good to go. Lord, I want to thank you for this day. I thank you for the opportunity to give you glory, to give you worship in this way. And thank you for the opportunity to dedicate these plots to you, to our school, to our communities, as a representation of our organizations. Again, we would like to pray for your traveling grace and your mercy for all of us as we get back home. And we want to thank you again for your many blessings, your, the joy and love that you give us every day. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Thank you all once again for coming out. I know it's getting hot, so you all are welcome to come to go home. But but before we leave, I'd like to say you can find out more how to donate and find out more about the MPHC Plaza project at troy.edu slash MPHC Plaza. Thank you all. <laughs>